Latroy has uh, called in uh, many times before in the past on on hot stove, and he calls in again. And, and Latroy, you were telling us during the during the commercial break, we were checking in with you that you made a little bit of news here the last time you were on, and uh, you've been hearing about it. <laughs> yeah, Harold asked me a question, and I, I simply just answered it, and it blew up into this big thing. He asked me what, how much longer do I plan on playing, and I said, uh, this will be my last year, Harold. And, whew, my phone started ringing off the hook. It hadn't stopped ringing since. <laughs> Thanks, Harold. Appreciate that, brother. <laughs> Uh, that's good stuff, man. No, hey, I'll I, I tell you what, looking back as you enter into your 21st year, and I know you don't really try to reflect right now because you just try to stay in that mode, but do you remember your first big league camp and what that was like? Yes, I really I, uh, I remember like it was yesterday. I never forget walking in the clubhouse and Kirby Puckett. You know, he greeted me like he had been knowing me uh, his whole life, man. It was, I was like, wow, maybe I, I made it, but... You know, it was just one of those things you'll never forget. You know, your first time in spring training, because I had never came up during spring training to pitch in the big leagues. We didn't do that with the Twins. So my first year in 95, going to spring training, and it was it was a big thing for me. Who was your first hitter you faced in the game? Oh, God. No. There you go. I remember spring training. I don't remember first hitter. I hear you. <laughs> He didn't go that well, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Latre, well, right. what's your secret here? I mean, heading into the, your 21st year, and uh, you're still performing in a you're high Still doing rate. aerobics, or did you move up to Pilates? You know what? My boy Brandon McIntosh, he's a trainer. This year I did some uh, kettlebells and some um, TRX, and I just, you know, mix it up every year, you know, a little muscle confusion. Uh, I worked out at home this year for the first time, so that's been pretty pretty cool and beneficial for me. You've been playing long enough that you didn't get my joke, but aerobics, remember when they used to have us do that in spring training? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was doing aerobics. I guess, we, I guess we both played before we had strength and conditioning guys, right? <laughs> yeah, man, that was crazy. I, I know we've talked in the past, too. You, you've also made it a point uh, to say, is just to liken it to a football analogy, Tom Brady just won his fourth Super Bowl. He wants to play another, what, four or five years, and, and he continues to work on his body. And I know that, that you've said in the past that uh, it's all about clean living for you. There, there's no drinking or anything like that. You treat your body like it's your temple. I definitely treat my body like it's my temple. You have to eat well, and you feed your machine, you know, the correct, you know, you know diet. Uh, you know, most times at night, it's going gonna, gonna to hold up. But you always tell people, and I've said it a million times, you know, if you have a, if you drive a Range Rover, and it's supposed to take gas. You don't put diesel in it, do you? Why not? Because it's going to mess up the engine. So, you know, I try to, try to, you know, put things in my body that's going to benefit me and not um, help me break down. Okay, so let me take you to the clubhouse on the field. Biggest trash talker you've been around? The biggest trash, probably Kirby Puckett. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kirby used to talk By some far, trash. Oh, you talk trash. Loud, priceless. And then everybody said, wow, you play with a lot of guys since Kirby Puck. But you know what? Kirby was my all-time favorite, so I always have to pick him. All right, so, so now that uh, you've let the cat out of the bag, that this year is going to be your last year here, so it's going to be the little Troy Hawkins farewell tour. What kind of no. gifts? <laughs> what, what kind of gifts would you like uh, along the way? Yeah, uh, the only gifts I, I think I, I really want, and my daughter, she's 13 years old. She'll be a freshman next year in high school. She, she'll be in school, but just, to, you know, for her to come out and, and my wife to come out and enjoy it just a little bit more and enjoy it with me because this is our last rodeo. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be one of those guys where, okay, I'm retiring and I'm going to come back next year. No, it's time to turn the page and hang out with my daughter and get her playing softball and enjoy our high school years with her. Hey, LaTroy, uh, take us back. Did you watch soap operas when you first started, or what's the trend now? You know what? I, I had a roommate, Glenn Evans from Chicago, that he loved MacGyver, and I hated MacGyver. <laughs> <laughs> so I used, to, I used to make him watch uh, All My Children <laughs> just because he made me watch MacGyver. So, <laughs> so we did watch them All My Children. But um, now everything, Instagram, Twitter, um, you know, I like shows like, um, I like all outdoors shows. Naked and Afraid is one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I like The Blacklist. 
stuff very, like that. Yeah. Very good. Very good. good. Well, yep. you can get them now. You know, when or when I was playing, if it was playing on TV, it was gone because you didn't have DVR and oh, yeah, all these no, other things. Not. That was it. Harold, you remember? You both of you guys remember when TV used to go completely off? <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. without, without a doubt. Amazing. You've been playing a long time. Hey, I want to ask you too. In the news has been the kids from Chicago, and I know. Uh, some people that may be watching for the first time didn't know your intimate relationship with them. You actually paid uh, with a group of your, your friends for all the parents to go to Williamsport to watch their kids play. So I'm curious your thoughts on all this uh, controversy. Well, you know, it's unfortunate for the, uh, the kids in the situation because I think some of the adults probably let them down. But, you know, I text uh, Bill Haley with the Jackie Robinson West Little League, and I told him, you tell those kids, you know, myself and – my peers are just as pro just as proud of them today as we were of them in August, and we'll just leave it at that. Just yeah. as proud of them. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's important for people to realize. I mean, while the adults may have screwed up here, and they certainly did, I mean, the kids they all they did was go out and play oh, baseball. Play ball, exactly. That's all they did was play ball. That's yeah. all they did was go out and play ball. You know, and then, you know, uh, get into a debate on Twitter and this guy saying, well, you know, you don't think the kid was, he was driving 25 miles to right. play a a little league game. I'm like, dude, when you was 12 years old, 12. you care how far you had to drive to go play baseball? Uh, no, I didn't care. Right, well, yeah, not only that, to especially, yeah. too, with the proliferation now, you talk about little league, but there's so many other leagues as well. Uh, the kids don't necessarily pay attention to how far you're going or if you're playing on different tournaments or whatever. Rules change from tournament to tournament, from league to league. So uh, the kids, pro I mean, my son's right in the middle of it, too. He's 14 years old and he's traveled all over the place to go play. So he's not asking, hey, are we in the right district or is this has this player been cleared by the rules? Kids are just out there playing baseball. Exactly. No. And like Cutch said, McCutcheon said, the kid, whoever it was that was not in living in there, he got a chance to play, show his talent on national team. And that right there could have been a break that he needed. And that was that was well said by McCutcheon. Very well said. He had a he had a grand slam on that article that he wrote on the on the Jeter site. That he had a home good. run. Well hopefully yep. he doesn't hit a grand slam off you this year. <laughs> no, I hope not either. You got you got <laughs> You got one more day at home, and then you head to camp for the last time. So, Latroy, good luck this year. Stay healthy. You come through New York. We'd love to have you in the studio. And that's yeah. always an open invitation. You know that. Hey, Harold, I got to give a shout-out to my boy Clint Rupp. He is Cameron Rupp, the catcher with the Phillies' little brother. He was texting me this morning, and he told me, hey, I'm about to hear you on the, on the TV on MLB Network. I was like, oh, man, thanks. I thought it was at 1045. Our time since, he was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. so I told him I was going to give him a shout out. Clint Rupp, he's Cameron Rupp, catch up for the Phillies, little brother. Thanks, Clint. Yeah, there you well, go. we should be thanking Clint as well. <laughs> so we appreciate yeah. it too. Well, Latroy, yeah. uh, enjoy your, 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 your final spring training and uh, best of luck to you in your 21st season. Thank you very much.